Georg Rühle and Doris Rank retired years ago. Once a week, they donate their time working at the food bank in Cologne. These banks salvage foods that supermarkets would otherwise throw away and pass it on to those most in need. Now in a controversial move, one food bank has temporarily stopped registering new people who aren't German, saying the resources are too tight to include migrants and foreigners. Many consider this racist. Doris Rank and Georg Rühle want to help anyone who doesn't have enough to eat, but that's becoming more and more difficult. It's eight in the morning at Cologne's food bank. In a few minutes, a fleet of vans will swarm out to the supermarkets and bakeries throughout the city, as they do every morning. Georg Rulle has been volunteering at Cologne's food bank for six years. For one day a week, he's one of the drivers in the fleet. It's all about doing something meaningful, not in the sense of earning money, but doing something that other people benefit from. Not for some anonymous company that just keeps profiting, but for those who don't have any spare cash, people who are in need. The warehouse is full of canned and dried goods that have been donated. Food banks see themselves as social logistics specialists. Critics see them as a stopgap for failed governmental social policies. Just in Cologne, the food bank passes out donations to 10,000 people in need at 30 separate distribution centers. Georg Rulle and his colleague Ulf Greber, both retired, have an eight-hour day ahead of them. But recently, their volunteer work has drawn sharp criticism. In the city of Essen, of all places, the German word for food is Essen, the food bank has started turning away foreign newcomers. Not everyone agrees with this decision. At first they said the so-called freeze for new admissions was due to how aggressive some of the young men were who were coming. That's completely fine, I think. Those people need to protect themselves. But now they've turned it around and said it's directed completely against foreigners. I don't agree with that. On each tour, the pensioners visit nine supermarkets. Hello, we're from the Cologne Food Bank. Do you have any foodstuffs for us today? It's 90 kilometers in total. We'll have to see which order we do it in and if we can manage it all in one trip. Wenn man das am besten auf die Reihe kriegt und ob wir es in einer Tour hinkriegen. We have three distribution centers, one of which is a school. But they don't cook themselves, so they only accept dry food, bread and dairy products. Then there are two ordinary distribution centers for those in need. At the first supermarket, Georg Rühle is braced for disappointment. In the past years, the supermarkets have optimized their purchases, meaning there is less left over for the food banks. At the same time, the number of those in need is rising. The vegetables are in perfect shape, but there are only two crates. If this goes on, many will wind up empty-handed today. Mm, green asparagus. That looks great. These are all things I would happily buy or consume myself, but later on we'll see some things where you can't help but wonder why they weren't just thrown out. All donated food is meticulously recorded. Some supermarket chains even advertise their generosity. Customers have split opinions on the matter. I think it's a good thing, a good institution. Of course, there will always be people taking advantage of it, but that's no reason to stop doing it entirely. I think what they're doing is good. 
If there are people who can't afford food, then it's up to the government to do something about it. If they're alone or retired, the government should take care of them. Off to the next supermarket. Employees aren't always prepared when the food bank comes by for the donations. Do you have the keys? This time, Georg and his colleague have to sift edible food out of a trash bag. Georg gets upset about society's throwaway mentality. He says the so-called best before date prescribed for perishables is part of the problem. Sure, that may make sense for raw meat and fish, but not for fruit and vegetables or bottled and canned goods. That makes no sense to me. Meanwhile, Doris Rank is waiting at one of the distribution centers for Georg's delivery to arrive. She's already gathered a few crates of fruit on her way over. I wouldn't want to eat this anymore. And if I'm not willing to eat it, then I don't want to hand it out to others either. But these pears, some are bruised or have some spots, that's fine. Oh, here comes the van. I have to move my car. I'm coming. Hallo. How are you two? Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot today. The first people have already lined up and are waiting to be called in. This is how Doris tries to avoid crowding and arguments. She already stopped admitting new customers months ago, but her freeze didn't target just foreigners. Today you can stay, but ordinarily we've stopped accepting more people. But today we have plenty, so you can stay. But you'll have to wait until 6. Well, you should be able to speak German, otherwise how can we communicate? Volunteers sort the food before it's distributed. Many used to come to the food bank themselves, including Doris Rank. My husband is very ill and requires level two care. He retired early, we had four children, and I had never really worked with papers before. Now I don't receive much pension either. Despite there being no new admissions, more and more people keep coming to the distribution center in hope of finding food. Suddenly, tensions rise. Doris refuses to serve a refugee. She says he's already registered at a different distribution center. That's wrong. No, it's not. It's not wrong. OK. OK. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. He lied. We have them registered in a computer database. That was a lie. You can't do that. These two women have been coming to this center for years. They aren't happy to see so many migrants. They wouldn't be able to make ends meet if it weren't for the food bank. It would be hard, so hard. I wouldn't be able to afford anything anymore. Sometimes I can't even afford to go to the hairdressers. It used to be just us Germans here, right? Yes, many older people stopped coming because they were scared. That's the reason they stopped coming. They get pushed aside and elbowed out of the way. When there's something special like Christmas last year, everything was set up here and they all came up with their big bags and elbowed their way in. And us Germans get nothing. The women working at the food bank can't quite confirm that, but they say the tone has become rougher and less and less people are willing to help out. They even have to take out their own trash now. Not everybody is able-bodied enough to help out and do the heavy lifting for hours. Most of the volunteers here are ladies. 
They already put up with a lot. And when it comes to the rooms, we looked for some for years. After the old community center was torn down, it took us a year and a half to find our new home here. They still want to keep going, though, and make sure that especially the youngest are not left alone. I always say children need fruit, children need vegetables, and when we have it, they need milk and dairy products like yogurt. And the team pays attention to that. A Kurdish family is also waiting. Only the youngest daughter can speak German. She had not heard that foreigners were being turned away from food banks before she saw it in the news. It's not like that here. Sometimes there's a little less, but in the end it's always enough. At least today, everybody gets plenty of food. Not just fruits and vegetables, but they also get yogurt, milk and sweets. Enough food to last at least two days. All for the token price of two euros. Doris also takes care of those who aren't able to come by. Sometimes I notice that a regular customer doesn't show up because they are sick. They call and apologize, and then I pack a bag for them and bring it over to them before I go home in the evening. In a country as wealthy as Germany, nobody should have to go hungry. Not as long as Georg Brühle and Doris Rank can help it.